This is the White Law PLLC Tellgate Show on Lansing's Big Talker, 1240 WJIL and Classic Rock 949 MMQ. Brought to you by White Law PLLC, Shaheen Chevrolet, Price Right Auto and RV, Blue Moon Belgian White. Lansing's Big Talker, 1240 WJIM, Lansing, and Classic Rock 94.9 WMMQ, East Lansing, Town Square Media Stations. Five, four, three, two, one. Begin connection. Now connecting. The game, 730 AM. Connected. Now connecting. 1240 WJIM. Connected. Now connecting. 94.9 MMQ. Connected. This is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on the Lansing Sports Network. The Big Talker 1240 WJIM and Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ. A tradition in Lansing for over 20 years. With your host, the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, and offensive-minded host, Beanie Powell. Powered by White Law PLLC. Hudson Incorporated. Kia of Lansing and Kia of Jackson. Price Right RV. MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine. Doubting Industries. Shoe and Sons Recycling Industrial Services. Gravity Smokehouse. Chandler's Top Shelf. E to Z Gutters. Alumni Hall. BM Trailer Services. Eat on the West Side. Jersey Mike's Pizza House. And Gazelle Wealth Management. Now, the fast at the stadium in the Price Right RV Studios. This is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show. Coming to you live from FanFest on Munfield, just southwest of Spartan Stadium, it's the White Law PLLC tailgate show on 1240 WJIM, Lansing's Big Talker, Classic Rock, 94.9 MMQ, and the Lansing Sports Network, LansingSportsNetwork.com. The White Law PLLC tailgate show is presented by White Law PLLC. Jamie White is a proud Spartan, and he's built a full-service, nationally recognized law firm with a team of experienced trial attorneys. While while White Law PLLC's track record speaks for itself with more than $1.4 billion in results, White Law PLLC fighting for their clients is their highest priority. You can check them out at whitelawpllc.com. The White Law PLLC tailgate show is broadcasting live from the Price Right RV Mobile Studio here on Munn Field. Price Right RV. Own your vacation. 2022 and 23 model year-end clearance is going on now at PriceRightRV.com. Go green, go right, go Price Right. This hour of the White Law PLLC tailgate show is brought to you by BNM Trailer Sales and LC. BNM Trailer Sales has been providing superior quality trailers and trailer parts in Mid Michigan for more than 30 years. If you're looking for a trailer with the right design, built with quality materials and components, and constructed with pride, BNM Trailer Sales is the number one choice. Visit BNM Trailer Sales and Elsie or check them out online at bnmtrailersalesinc.com. Our restaurant sponsor this week on the White, El- White Law PLLC Tailgate Show is Pizza House in East Lansing, located in Hannah Plaza on Hagedorn Road. Pizza House has been a family-owned and operated Lansing favorite for 40 years. Pizza House is an MSU-preferred tailgate vendor, delivering food to tailgates across campus known for their Chicago-style pizza. 24 beers on tap, including 18 local Michigan brews. Pizza House offers a free shuttle to and from all home games here at MSU. You can visit Pizza House in Hannah Plaza on Hagedorn Road today and online at PizzaHouse.com. Well, I am not Brandon Howe. I am not Beanie. I am your host, Chris Solari, the MSU beat writer for the Detroit Free Press, filling in for the offensive-minded host, Beanie Howe. On the game, 7.30 a.m., I'm joined by the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, who's heard daily, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the game, 7.30 a.m. on Stout on Sports. Brock Palmbush is back at our Price Right RV Home Studio, keeping you updated on traffic conditions. And I can tell you the weather here today, outside of Munn Field, is gorgeous it is as good a day for football as you can find tim welcome in and maryland is on the clock as they say in the program and boy what a what that clock has been ticking quite a bit some people might say it's a time bomb some people might say it's a chance for redemption today i don't know i don't know what to expect from this game but i i know that this is going to be a a doozy of a game and a pivot game one way or the other for this program well <clears throat> what a what a month of September. Four home games, four good days of weather, one 
football coaching change, <laughs> one host on the tailgate show change. I mean, what happens next week when they finally go back? I just want to know, am I, am I the acting host or am I the interim host? You know, in the world we live in today, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I, mean, I have absolutely no idea. I mean, it, I, I'm still thinking I'm in a time warp. I, I'd have to look it up. And when's the last time State played four home games in September? If they ever Boy, that's did. a good question. I'm wondering if they've it's ever been played a while. four home games in September. And it's a five Saturday September. Yeah, I was going to say, when's is. the last time you played five five games in a month? Five games in a month. Of and September. the first game was on a Friday. Yeah, and the first one was on a Friday. And and all of the games did not have any weather issues one way or the other. I remember that first week. And remember that was when you know all the tornado issues went yeah. through here the weekend before that. And then, but by the time we got to Friday. Friday night, September 1st, for the first game against Central Michigan. Who knew then, four weeks from then, look where we are today. But but that's college sports today. Every single week there is something different, something one way or the other. Like, to, uh, <clears throat> right now, absolutely right now, <laughs> because if Solari can be off the top today, Tom Emmerich and Ann Emmerich, and, did, hey. and did the uh, the homecoming parade. I heard night. that she was the Grand yeah. Marshal. This is, this is a homecoming week to get here and get sitting. Well, well, and they're always here because they're here because their son's got the band here. Yeah. Uh, Anvil Crush is ready to play here, and, you know, that's their... They think he's probably going to make above $50 million here in the next year or two, and they just hope that they're in his will. Look, look for John Schneider's investment yeah. firm here with what his son's been doing with Lord Huron. Because... But, but, but we got Tom Emmerich's microphone right there all ready to go because Shoepan is a huge sponsor of Michigan State Sports and all that. But you know where I missed last week? It wasn't on the games. If you'd have told me... That the first alcohol sales day, they'd sell 16,500 yeah. cans of alcohol. I'd say that's way, way, way too high. Does too that high? surprise you? I thought it was too low. Really? Yeah. And yeah. they've changed things around today to try to make the line shorter. And if you have a 330 game with this kind of weather, that number could go up depending on how the game goes, right? Yeah. I think, look, it's going to be trial and error. It's brand new to everybody. So I would not have huge expectations for the rest of the season for them to get it right. Yeah. Uh, so you can't blame anybody at Michigan State for any long lines and, and all that stuff. I only ask that if you consume the beverage container, which will be a deposit container, to make sure you find a bin to put it in so it gets recycled. So do uh, we know of any of those 6,500? Every you, one of them, Tim. Most every of them, one of them. They all got recycled. <laughs> every one of them. We, we, you hope that most of them, if not all of them, got recycled one way or the other. Yes. Uh, Money so, back to the program. So that's another big, you know, <laughs> so that's another big deal here today, one way or the other. This is day two of four shots at selling alcohol at the game. Did you see any of it ongoing at all in any way, shape? perform because they say I, they're changing it a bit today uh where i said i didn't see it so, I, <laughs> so but i heard of the concourse there was quite a few very very long lines so it was uh, yeah, but they want to change that to make it more accessible for people one way or the other right, so right. tell us about edward who's playing here today at the meyer fan fest and will crush can you get us autographs pictures all sure, that good sure. and by the way when did they start here uh when they start at twelve thirty. so i, I was a oh, little nice. concerned that that they might be too loud for your show, they play over you. But I think you're tucked back in the corner enough here, you'll be just fine. <laughs> well, if they, they, um, if, I mean, why are they going to lose anything with us with what we say with the expertise that we bring? Well, to well this they're thing? not. I was, I was afraid your Quite listeners honestly, would be some of us are hoping they might drown us out. Were you at the homecoming Agreed. parade? I was. I sat with Ann up on the little stage while she did the uh, MC or whatever it was with Russ White. It was yeah, great. Chris, Chris, Chris was there. Chris said that it was a good crowd, yeah. nice night, everything good. Everybody was having a good time. It so, was. Uh, and it, it was a nice honor for Ann, one way or the other, that she was able to go ahead. Now, can I want you to stick around, but if you can trade places with the Michigan State president for a second, we'll visit with her right now. Can you do that? I, I can stick around, but his band starts in 20 minutes, so I'll be over there. All right. And then I can come back. I'll bring him back. You can put Make him sure on. you got earplugs in for the band. Yes, All I right. know. Not my first rodeo there. <laughs> well, we appreciate it when the Michigan State president comes by to say hi. So, sure. Teresa, sure. Tom Embrick's going to – he's the warm-up act for you. Oh, you know, he, he's the like, yeah, – you know, he, 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 absolutely. We'll say good morning to Teresa Woodruff, the president of Michigan State University. Have you met Chris Solari, Teresa, at all? Nice, nice to meet you. you. Yeah, he, how are Chris you? is good. good he he had had the family at the homecoming parade last night, and oh, I'm told great. everybody had a great time. Yeah. Did anybody get President Smarties? I called him Smarty Smarties. I was Smarties, growing Smarties. Out Smarties. Oh, nice. I yeah. thought that was the right candy for a president to send. Tom, what do you think? So. 
Are your duties much different on a day like today being homecoming or pretty much it's routine now through four home games in the month of you September? You know, there's a lot of, uh, they've been pretty similar. Uh, I've upregulated some of my um, visits to tailgates and uh, that's been a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we've got a two hour uh, tailgate at Breslin today with a lot of uh, uh, great alumni. I'm looking forward to that as well. So and Emily sends me notes, and she okay. sent, she, sent, she say? Well, she sends me the notes because I, you know, homecoming is such a tradition at Michigan it is. State. This 107th is seventh year. One hundred seventh. It dates back to 1915, and the only two years I remember the 1943 because of World War II. President Han at the last moment shut down football in 1943 yeah. for that one year. And then, of course, the COVID year, 2020. Right, right. we didn't have it that year either, which was a real shame, but we're yeah. back. And if any, you were at the parade, Chris, yep. it was lined all the way from the yeah. beginning all the way up to Shaw it's Lake. A it's a great Every parade. Every year, it is. I mean, with, with everything that comes in, I mean, it's one of those things where the whole community comes around, and it's more than just the campus. That's the nice thing. And that's, you know, having been here as a student and having been here now, it, with my family, it's it, it's nice to see the two sides of Grand River merging right in the middle. It is to see that, and what? you know all those young Spartans. I was trying to admit everyone as I went along. I had to tell <laughs> our great admissions director uh, John Ambrose. I got a few admit- admissions. I got to let you know they're going to be our class at twenty forty five. So that's so. Why do you think homecoming at say a school like here or across America has stood the test of time and is still popular? You know, I think it's because the foundation of Michigan State is family, and so families always come to together. They come together to celebrate. They come together to uh, make sure they put their arms of support around each other. And so homecoming for Michigan State is just like uh, Thanksgiving. You know, we're coming together as a family. The parade route works perfectly, too. It did. They just go, and it had not shake goes, and you just turn left and cramp forever, go on into campus and all that. Well, to watch the bands do that is really an art of, uh, it's just a real feat for them to be able to do that. You know, this is just me. I, I think we're the Big Ten leads the nation amongst other places in marching bands we do without a doubt our bands are really the best and today the halftime show is going to be extraordinary we have a guest who's going to be uh um playing a a clarinet solo that's going to rock the house and perhaps you're leading me to this do you know that the band asked me to uh, direct the alma mater in the pregame Good for you. So uh, I'm going to be up on the ladder directing our alma mater, and I couldn't be. That's one of the most, I'm just so humbled to have been asked to do that. I don't remember any other presidents who were ever asked to do that. It's really extraordinary. Our band is just a great group of students, and I just love every one of them. But when you look at how hard all 350, whatever number it is, work, and the military precision of not making one single mistake, even with a freshman. That's right. Because I always ask David Thornton and the John Band before him, I said, I'm amazed that they don't make more mistakes. Yeah, David is a great leader and uh, they follow his baton so readily uh, um, and Weber and uh, Goldman all the rest of them are just really sensational and we've got a whole group of uh, doctoral students who are uh, the aides there and for my conducting I actually took conducting classes this week uh, with one of the doctoral students there so that I, I made sure I was on the downbeat. So nice. I'm ready. I'm it's ready. more than just waving your arms. It like is. That, that's exactly right. Uh, there's a real art to it. And uh, again, when I crawl up on that ladder, I just really am so proud to represent uh, this whole great Do you university. meet anybody in any way from the University of Maryland? or so, any- we, so every game, I've made it a point to email the presidents, talk with them ahead of time. Daryl Pines is the great president of Maryland, just a, a superb leader, someone that I really admire and look up to. Uh, he is not here uh, today, but I always make sure he knows that he's welcome to Cole's house. He's welcome up to the box. And uh, each of the presidents uh, I've been able to have good conversations with. And that's another great part of what I think is important. I've done it with some of the other sports, uh, with basketball in particular. Volleyball, of course, yesterday we won a great day- game down in Ann Arbor. I was going to say, you're uh, off Leah to a good Johnson, start we this are, weekend. Yeah. We are. Leah Johnson just has the uh, has the um, uh, team going well. And, of course, last weekend, the Mary Folsom golf outing. Tom and I were out on Sunday when we were leading 10 under by the end of Sunday. And then, uh, you know, we had the top uh, woman, uh, I'm forgetting her name right now, but uh, really great outcome there. And Zach Kelly is Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week again for our men's soccer. So really excited for him. You could replace him. Oh, you know, no, easy. Chris, not Chris. You, no. Easy. You well, I'm a replacement anyway, so the value of a replacement. <laughs> Clearly I'm easy. replaceable. But then, so, you know, because... I mean, and then don't leave out men's soccer. Who's well, undefeated. Men's soccer, they beat Indiana here they last are night. really off to a fast start, and Zach's a good part of that. And, you know, I'm looking forward to what the rest of the season holds for them. They've come together as a team. All our student athletes really have 
come together in an essential way. Our men's football is really together. They have bonded with each other. I think I may have mentioned to you, Tim, last week that the that the um, band, the entire band, went over to meet with the football team. Yep. And that really, I think, also let them know that they're not alone, that they, are, that everyone is part of this family. And so it's an exciting time on Michigan State's campus. You can see that by the vibrancy of the people all across this place. I'm a, I said to Chris when I came in here this morning, it's amazing to me. Now, the weather's part of it, yep. and but I think the campus is a huge part of it. It's amazing to me how so many thousands of people are here four and a half to five hours yeah. before the game. That's right. Well, you know, this morning, <laughs> Tom and I woke up to at 7 a.m. to thud thud yeah and someone had set up their cornhole which we're happy for we, we have no problem there's right under our window we are we you know we just love everything that's about uh, campus life and then about an hour later the the drum line struck up some you know some great uh, cadences and but 7 a.m they're out here ready to go ready to celebrate and again it's 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 nobody's telling them to do it it's part of being a family it's part of no it, the draw of this campus this physical property which ipf got out and every blade is perfect uh, every tree has been trimmed. It's it's just a beautiful place on a beautiful day. I need to get them to come and get my house yeah. before they, they do. could. They could do that. So now, I have a question though. It, it's particularly with the events in February uh, on campus. This seems like it's a more special it moment is. for people it to is. come back. To. Right. I think people really want to wrap their long. Uh, warm arms of Spartan Nation around each other. Uh, there's an essentiality to what happens when one is hurt, it's, it's everyone, and uh, everybody's still on different paths, different places on paths towards healing, And um, but we, you know, we, I think everybody is here to really say that um, they believe in Michigan State uh, and they love Michigan State and they're not, they're not abandoning Michigan State. And that's really something that I think is really critical to the over 51,000 students who are here. They know that they have a family uh, that they can look up to, mentors in the field that they can go and talk to. And, uh, you know, we're going to leave them a world that uh, they're going to have to um, uh, take over. And I think they're ready. So before you go, it's my understanding that the opening Saturday of alcohol went well, and there are a yep. few tweaks today just yep. to try to make the lines a little shorter. Yeah, a little congestion at the beginning, and but people were very kind and considerate. They stood in line, and but we are going to try and make it less congested for the people who are trying to get out and about. So, uh, yeah, that went well. The magnetometers went well. We've you know we've made a little adjustment there. But uh, all in all, I think we're really pleased with the way, and people are so cordial to each other. Um, and uh, accommodating. And uh, that's part of the grace and empathy that's part of the spirit of Michigan State. Absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate it when you always I come back. I appreciate you. And appreciate by the you, way, Chris. the next time we see us in four weeks, it might not be the sunny in Michigan. I know. Well, well, we might be in parkas, <laughs> but you know what? We're going to be here. Uh, so that's right. Well, all right. it's good to see both Thanks of you. Thank you for you all well. you do. Be well. Have fun. You Enjoy well. the day. Have a great you know, day today. Smile, smile. You're off to the, 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 the sports weekend for her is off to a great start. <laughs> Man, they've won everything inside. We always appreciate uh, when the Michigan State makes the present through the tailgate years. I think virtually every one of them have come. And John Engler came by here. Yeah. He was always happy to come by, even though it was an interim you know, basis and all that. And, you, you know, the amazing thing about this stuff, they come by when there could be chaos in other ways going on around the university. One way or the other. This so, is the solace point. This is the solace. When you get a football Saturday like this and you bring everybody back and you have the people coming home, home for a weekend. I mean, no, there, I, there's so many people that leave that feel like this is home. Totally agree. And that's why. So, Nathan, when are we supposed to take our first yeah. break? Are we, we supposed we to do that now? Well, let's... Uh, let Chris has got the note, so let yeah, him do well, it. That brings us to the drive of the game presented by Hudson, Inc. Choose a drive from the previous game to highlight here, says Brandon Howell. I should probably not just read it, huh? Um, the drive of the game last week, the final drive of the game, the only touchdown drive in a 41-7 loss against number 8 Washington. 11 plays. 99 yards, 5 minutes and 25 seconds, capped by a 4-yard touchdown run, the first of his college career by backup quarterback Caton Hauser. And that was the only score, and maybe, maybe, Tim, maybe it means there's a little more coming. What uh, kind of a day is it going to be as we go to break? 9.27 to go first quarter in Ann Arbor. Rutgers 7, Michigan nothing. Watch uh, out. There you go. Watch out. One, thing, one more thing about that drive. Those 11 plays, the 99 yards, and the 5 minute 25 seconds in the first three games this season, all the most in each category for Michigan State's offense. And that's the drive of the game brought to you by Hudson, Inc. 
Hudson Inc., it's time to gear up for fall with a John Deere compact tractor from Hudson. 0% financing for 84 months on select tractors at Hudson Inc. Hudson Inc. has 19 locations in Michigan, including four right here in the Lansing area in Charlotte, Mason, Portland, and Williamston. Visit Hudson Inc. online at HudsonInc.com. We're going to go to break now on the White, LL, White Law L P L L C tailgate show. It's brought to you by Hudson Inc., Kia of Lansing and Kia of Jackson, Price Right RV, MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine, Doubting Industry, Gravity Smokehouse, Shoopan and Sons Recycling Industrial Services, and our featured restaurant sponsor this week, Pizza House in East Lansing. We'll be right back. Want to be heard? Open the Lansing Sports Network app and voice your sports opinions now. More from the White Law PLLC Telgate Show next. Food. Another travel update from the 1240 WJIM Traffic Center. Next. It's the White Law PLLC Telgate Show on the Lansing Sports Network. The Big Talker 1240 WJIM and Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ. A tradition in Lansing for over 20 years. With your hosts, the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, and offensive-minded host, Beanie Howell. Powered by White Law PLLC. Hudson Incorporated. Kia of Lansing and Kia of Jackson. Price Right RV. MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine. This is the White Law PLLC tailgate show it's another game day travel update from the 1240 wjim traffic center here's brock palmbush there are a few slow spots out there for you to be aware of 69 westbound between m52 and upton road coming in from flint uh, that's because of the uh, peacock road uh, construction going on there uh, 96 westbound between weberville and williamston is uh, slowing up as well and coming in from the west side 496 eastbound between kreitz road and lansing road that's where that uh, lane closure is still active until mid-november as far as the weather today it's absolutely perfect it's 70 degrees and fair skies going to be mostly sunny uh, 73 degrees will be a high, and it'll gradually cool off as it gets closer uh, to uh, dark when the uh, game gets over with. Uh, it'll get down into the low 60s, maybe even the upper 50s by the time the game is over. Game day traffic and weather brought to you by Kia of Lansing and Kia of Jackson, home of the $3,000 minimum trade. is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on the Lansing Sports Network. The Big Talker 1240 WJIM and Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ with your hosts, the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, and offensive-minded host, Beanie Howell. Powered by White Law PLLC. Now from FanFest at the stadium in the Price Right RV Studios, this is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show. All right, we are back. I'm Tim Stout. Chris Solari is here. Nathan Meyer is here. Brock's back in the studio. We got all kinds of guests on this beautiful day. Come see us at the Meyer Fan Fest. Uh, this is, if you did not know it, Electric Vehicle Week across America. And at the Meyer Fan Fest, there's always something different for home football fans every Saturday. And today there are a number of pretty good-looking electric vehicles that are on display here. And Jeff Myram is with us. He's the Director of Electrical Vehicle Programs for Consumers Energy. They're on display here today, and Jeff is with us this morning or this afternoon now right now. There are a number of vehicles here, right? And what is the purpose of them here? And for people who come to the Meyer Fan Fest, Jeff, what do you want them to examine with the vehicles here, electrical vehicles for the future of America? Is that fair to say? Absolutely. We see... Hang on just a sec. Uh, try going. Re that, take two. Excellent question. So we see a lot of people curious about electric vehicles. And so being able to come out to an event like FanFest, ask any question you want about how to charge, the range, uh, any way you want to try to stump us, we're happy to have those questions. And we've got multiple EVs here today, a Ford F-150 Lightning out, Chevy Bolt, uh, and others on top of that, including a Michigan State University electric police car with Mach E. So that's a, always a fan favorite. I think Michigan State University announced this week that what had added another fast charger for people with electrical vehicles on campus who want to use the fast charger, there's another one available here, right? Just opened up that fast charger yesterday. It's at the Amtrak station right here at the MSU campus. Two of them are available. And if you're coming to the game or visiting the campus in general, great place to fast charge and get back out on the road. And the development of electrical vehicles in America, like anything else, from the first vehicle when it was introduced to where things are going now, I would imagine there's been an enormous technical upgrade. Fair to say? 
Absolutely huge. Most people are surprised that the average EV today gets more than 250 miles. And at the fast charging station, like we just mentioned, half hour or less to get back out on the road and where you're going. And you believe that the dealerships, many of them across America, let alone Michigan, let alone Lansing, have a supply of electrical vehicles for those who are interested and have not really thought about this for the first time, right? Yeah, this year is much better than last year. And the other benefit about them being on the lot this year, too, is there's federal tax credits. So $7,500, a potential tax credit for purchasing a new vehicle, which helps out a lot in today's market. Why is Consumers Energy so involved with the electrical vehicles and their growth across America? So our main mission is to get people to charge off-peak. If you think about your typical household energy use, an electric vehicle adds quite a bit. And so we want people to charge overnight while they're sleeping, and that allows us to not go back out and upgrade the grid. And that saves money for everybody, whether you drive an electric vehicle or not. And uh, you've been in this role with consumers for how long now? So our team's been going about four years. Uh, So quite a few years I've been driving EVs for that same amount of time as well. And are you optimistic moving forward in America? Is this going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow? Because it sure gets a lot of publicity, don't they? (laughs) We have seen huge growth. We've seen 60 to 70% growth year over year the last two years. And the state of Michigan actually has a goal for 2 million EVs by 2030. And that's what we want to be prepared for and be out here today to talk about the educational efforts of why charging off-peak is important, as well as answering any other questions you might have about the technology. Will there be enough charging stations as they continue to be added across the state of Michigan? I think the governor makes reference to this all the time, right? There absolutely will be. There will be over 100 new fast charging stations opened within the next two years and even more after that. So the market just continues to grow rapidly. Very good. Jeff, thanks for coming. Enjoy the game today. I I understand that you have a lot of great uh, EV information and content on a blog, force4michigan.com. Is that correct? That is totally correct. We would love it if people would visit the website. Plenty of information there in addition to being able to apply for our rebate program. $500 $500 off the installation of a home level two really helps. All right. Thanks, Jeff. I Thanks, appreciate Jeff. that. Jeff Myron will be here. And you come in the Meyer Fan Fest, you'll see all the vehicles off to the left. They look shiny, brand new, and on a day like today, they look pretty strong. <laughs> Thank you for having me. All right. Very okay. good. Jeff Thanks, Myron Jeff. from He is the director of electrical vehicle programs for Consumers Energy. And if you have questions as you come by, take a look all the way around. Yes. It's a busy day. We've got a lot of people by here. We've got, uh, we have food, we have fun, we have friends. And when the weather is exactly like this, you know there are going to be people to stop by. How about Rutgers? They went, on the opening drive, they went 69 yards, or they went 73 yards in yeah. three, three plays. plays. They hit a 69-yard pass, and they lead Michigan 7. And that's exactly why you play these games yep. instead of talking and about them all the time. It, and guess what? East happen. Carolina, and you know, we talked all week about suspensions of coaches and everything else. And you know, Jim Harbaugh's back on the sideline, and that's the first thing that happens. And that's the very first thing that happens. And this isn't this isn't UNLV or Bowling Green or East Carolina anymore. If you're wondering, Michigan State's second road game at, and the first after its bye week is October. What is that? The 13th or 14th? I think it's the 14th. The 14th. Yeah. They are at Rutgers. Although Michigan yep. has just tied the game at seven. Michigan just scored. That sounds about right. right. I think that's going to be a fan, fascinating game. Um, this is Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press. If you're listening for Beanie uh, filling in here on the white. Law PLLC tailgate show on 1240 WJIM, Lansing's Big Talker, Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ, and broadcasting live from the Price Right RV Mobile Studio on Munn Field. This hour of the White Law PLLC tailgate show is brought to you by BNM Trailer Sales. And Tim, uh, this is this is going to be a fascinating. Day. The wind's starting to pick up here a little bit. Yep. Um, and I know that it's the same down in Ann Arbor. They were getting some winds down there and gusts. It's going to be interesting to see if this, particularly for Michigan State and Maryland, uh, that kicks off at 3.30, how much of a factor that's going to be because Michigan State needs all the benefits that it can, and that wind could kill some punts or make some field goal tries go amiss or blow them in. Who knows? Well, what I'm curious to see, Chris, is you know, and this is Chris's beat, hour after hour, day after day, month after month, with all of the chaos going into last week's game, all right, at least now this new setup, they had a chance to look at a game tape against an extremely quality team. So I think that kind of sets where they are, where they think they have to improve. But Maryland has to show me that it can pick up where it's left off with those three home games. I watched a lot of their clips. I mean, they've been behind 14 to nothing yeah. in the last two games. 
but they were playing Charlotte. They were playing Virginia. And if you watch Virginia last night, that's not one of America's great football teams. It's a, it's a battle of two teams that have started off slow in every game that they've played this season. And the one statistic about Maryland that can't get out of my mind is that in Big Ten play, Mike Loxley, who's a coach at Maryland, he's 11-27. and 27. So even though Maryland's 3-0, and 0, this is the Big Ten opener, and this is on the road in a big stadium. I mean, Maryland won at Maryland last year, but when I go back and look at that, it was a bizarre game of mistakes all yeah. the way across the board. I, I have to see that Maryland's quarterback, who gets a lot of publicity, he's got more experience than anybody in the Big Ten, but is he anywhere close to Michael Penix of Washington? I couldn't believe how good that team was, even though Michigan State struggled. I mean, you tell me. I, I thought Washington was – I wanted to see him play Michigan. Yeah, well, you got two offensive-minded coaches between Kalen DeVore for Washington and Mike Loxley at Maryland, and I think that's one thing. Two is a little, or Talia is a little bit different, and he's smaller, but he can move the pocket, he can throw on the run, he extends plays a little bit, and he can escape you. And that the difference between two years ago when he threw for 350 yards here and Michigan State's win, and last year is Michigan State was able to get four sacks, and they got to get pressure today on him. And I don't know what your defensive keys are for the game, but. When do you want them? Well, I think we've got them anytime you want right now. For the defensive keys to today's game, powered by Gazelle Wealth Management. Let's break down the defensive keys brought to you by Gazelle Wealth Management. Tim, go at it. What do you think? Well, Joe Gazelle is a wonderful financial advisor. You can schedule a meeting with him, 336-7200. You can remember that, and he's easy to find at 2260 East Saginaw Street, and that's at East Lansing Gazelle Wealth Management. Look, when you've given up 713 yards in the previous week, if you can fall out of bed, it might be an improvement in the next game because I doubt Maryland, even with a big day today, is going to get anywhere close to 713 yards and the question is if if the washington would have had to have every yard it could possibly get what would that number have maxed out at so michigan state with a little bit more of a tame week if that's the right terminology obviously michigan state secondary was shredded by a tremendous quarterback and wonderful receivers a good offensive line washington didn't make many mistakes is that what maryland's going to do today the quarterback uh Tagovailoa, he, he's been around, he is mobile, he can throw on the run. I think the whole key today is can Michigan State secondary possibly prevent big plays, avoid pass interference, avoid personal fouls, make Maryland earn every single thing it possibly could get. Because, like I say, in all honesty, blunt as it sounds, if Michigan State's defense could fall out of bed, it's going to be better than 713 yards that it gave up last week against Washington. But those are all ifs. If they can do this, if they can do that, if they can avoid defensive holding, if they can not make any mistakes on special teams defensively as well, cover the punts, all that good stuff. I mean, obviously, all of that likely will improve today, but a tremendous amount of improvement will be needed. Whether Maryland is anywhere close offensively to what Washington offered, we'll see when the game starts at 3.30. The defensive keys from Gazelle Investment and Wealth Management. Call Joe. You schedule a meeting with him at 336-7200. And that's, I tell you, Tim, we, we probably have a few minutes before we have to go back, right? Go to break right here. Okay, well, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about what to expect here in this game, uh, particularly on that side of the ball with Michigan State's defense coming off of last week's rough game against Washington. Uh, the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show is also brought to you by Chandler's Top Shelf, A to Z Gutters, Alumni Hall, BNM Trailer Sales, Meat on the West Side, Pizza House, Gazelle Wealth Management, and our featured restaurant sponsor this week, Pizza House in East Lansing. More from Munfield when we come back. It's Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press and Tim Stout. Stay tuned. Want to be heard? Open the Lansing Sports Network app and voice your sports opinions now. More from the White Law PLLC Telgate Show next. Hey, Dr. Portrayal. Back with more of the White Law PLLC Telgate Show on 1240 WJIM and 94.9 MMQ in less than 60 seconds. 
The Michigan State Spartan football team is back for another season on the Lansing Sports Network. The Big Talker 1240 WJIM and Classic Rock 949 MMQ. Never miss another touchdown or tackle again. Stream the game in the free Lansing Sports Network app. Powered by White Law PLLC, MSU Healthcare, Chupan and Sons, Gravity Smokehouse, Doubting Industries, and Chandler's Top Shelf. It's another game day travel update from the 1240 WJIM Traffic Center. Here's Brock Palmbush. Uh, no backups or accidents to report at this time. Traffic uh, pretty much around normal speeds right now. Uh, you can expect delays on Grand River, though. Both directions in East Lansing between Spartan Avenue and Hagedorn Road. There's a single lane closure due to maintenance. That's until uh, the end of August. You can expect uh, delays in that area. Find an alternate route to the stadium if you possibly can. As far as weather goes, it's 70 degrees and mostly sunny. Absolutely gorgeous today. Mostly sunny, a high in the low 70s. It will cool off as it gets later on in the uh, game. It'll be mostly clear tonight with a low temperature in the low 50s. Game day traffic and weather brought to you by Kia of Lansing and Kia of Jackson. Home of the $3,000 minimum trade. This is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on On the the Lansing Lansing Sports Sports Network. Network. The Big Talker 1240 WJIM and Classic Rock 949 MMQ with your hosts, the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, and offensive minded host, Beanie Howell. Powered by White Law PLLC. Now from FanFest at the stadium in the Price Right RV Studios. This is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show. Welcome back to the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on 1240 WJIM, Lansing's Big Talker and Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ, and the Lansing Sports Network, LansingSportsNetwork.com. Broadcasting live from the Price Right RV Mobile Studio on Mum Field. This hour of the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show is brought to you by BNM Trailer Sales and Elsie. It's Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press filling in for Beanie Howe of Offensive Minded here with Tim Stout, the Dean of Sports here in Mid Michigan. You can get him on WILX. You can get him on the game 7.30 a.m. every day from 10 to 1. I, I'm not used to your new hours. But we changed them from 9 to noon yeah. to 10 to 1 a couple of years ago when we had a, a number of different program changes, and I like it better. Everybody thinks it's because you can sleep in. No, because it cuts down the time to kill between radio and TV. That's so instead true. of about three hours to kill, you only have two. And, use, and, a, and at this time of the year with Michigan State, there is no time to kill because all you have to do is look at your phone at any given moment. and Oh, I didn't know that happened. And, of course, in the social media world with Twitter, accurate or otherwise something comes in somewhere somehow some way around here you know uh this is the fourth straight home football saturday and i think and nathan can tell you if he agrees this is the largest crowd of the four and i think they've consecutively got larger from central michigan to richmond to washington last week uh to today because there are several thousand people i think you know as the meyer fan fest the word gets around what can we do while we're over here for four hours and you have so many different free things for people to do i mean we got the the alumni bands over here we got another band on stage over here we've got all kinds of different games for the kids to play last week when we were here i only noticed about three washington fans that were through here but i thought there were a number of them in the stadium a lot of them who we talked to though before the game they weren't from the state of washington Washington. They were a Washington alumni from the state of Michigan. Yeah. Did you find any media people that were here for the well, game Saturday and then went to Detroit and covered the Seahawks and Lions on Sunday? You know, I didn't see anybody up there that did, but it wouldn't surprise me. I know that there was some talk from a few people of, of getting down there, and maybe a bit might have been more of the fans that were trying to double dip a little bit. But certainly, that was you know having the Seahawks and Kenneth Walker. Had, had a draw for both programs in some ways, and the fans of both programs. It was remarkable, too, when that game got out of reach on a, on a day where the weather was good. The stadium emptied out pretty quickly. From halftime, when you got to near the end, I yeah. mean, when you got near the end of the third quarter, let's just say there, there weren't a whole lot of people left, which is somewhat traditional around here we were talking not so much on a game on a day like this well that's where you have the better weather when it's september and and you have a chance to be outside for one final really sometimes you you just never know when this is going to be the last good day 
before everything turns. And well, the amazing thing, the view we have toward the east side of the stadium is when the game starts, you know, there are students in the lower deck. But the upper deck takes about 10 minutes of the first quarter to fill, and then it does. And then by halftime, no matter what it is, then some of them start to think there are other activities today that we want to get involved with. And if we have to watch it downtown to do it, I mean, it's just different the way people watch these games anymore, especially here. But the crowds have been good, and my guess is there will be another huge crowd here today. Good weather. It's a Big Ten game, and I think a 3.30 game is popular, too. Yeah, plus it being homecoming week and yeah. weekend yep. with a lot of different events on campus and, and obviously the Man- Meyer Fan Fest here uh, on Munn Field. Uh, it, 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 you know, that's one thing that Michigan State hasn't done it, is lost fan support. No. Over the years, I mean, it's, it's been one of the top supported programs. The stands are generally filled. The, the Indiana game last year, when it was bad weather... That was one of the outliers. And, you know, I I think moving forward here with whatever happens, because let's face it, I mean, where this program is at this point in the season with all the things and distractions and and coaching change and swirling about, um, you know, that's a concern. I I think that's a concern for the players and the coaches that are still on, on staff. I think it's a concern for everybody in the university, but... The one thing that Michigan State fans have done is support some some pretty rough times. They have, and I think it'll be interesting. You know, uh, sometimes, especially this fall or this month, a day around here is a lifetime. But there, we're not back here for four weeks, and that's the Michigan game. That's on October 21st. How the world will look different in Big Ten football, Michigan State football, Michigan football, college football, how yeah. it's going to look different four weeks from now. That's a night game. I don't know if it'll be as festive then <laughs> as it is now. Uh, and I don't know where Michigan will be. I don't know where Michigan State will. I mean, who knows? I mean, I guess I should, I mean, when, you know, we interview you on the radio, it's because you're the one that has this every day. I guess after today's game, what the next headline is Tuesday, right, with the apparent announced termination one way or the other for good yeah. of Mel Tucker. Well, we are, we're waiting to see what situation happens with his attorneys. Um, he'll have an opportunity. He has an opportunity to file uh, a grievance with the termination process. That would go into federal court out in Grand Rapids. And then what happens from there, you know, we'll see. Um, So I get asked all the time, and of course I have no idea. For the hearings on October 5th and 6th, where are they? Who attends? Can the media attend? Can the public attend? What happens when they're all done? What happens yeah. next? And how long of a gap is there before something's announced from the end of those hearings? Yeah, these, and I have absolutely no yeah, idea. Yeah, these are all private hearings. Title IX hearings are not open court. And no media, no no public. It'll be interesting to see where it is. I, mean, I, I can remember, what's interesting, you remember back in 1996, I think it was, the summer of 96 when MSU had the NCAA hearings in Kansas City. And that was a publicized thing. They were closed doors, but reporters were there. They knew where they were going to be at. These are different proceedings. These are these are private matters in quite in a lot of cases, and oftentimes like this one, sensitive matters because they're involving potential victims uh, of any number of things. You know, this obviously would fall under the sexual misconduct and relationship violence and all those other things that are covered. Uh, by Title IX and by the university's uh, office of uh, in, in, in equity. So, well, and that's, then, but but no, these are not public hearings, and you know I don't know if we, what we will hear beyond the parties involved. Well, a, then, a lot of times, because this isn't like a public record comparatively. Well, and then, so what happens to Michigan State football moving forward? Is a new president have to come on board before there's another coach on board? How it, and I don't think anybody knows that. I don't think Michigan State's people. I don't think their board knows that. I I, I think you got to get past Tuesday, and then after that, I mean, you got to play the games with the staff that's there, with the players who are there, and try to encourage them to just focus on what they're doing and hope for the best one way or the other. I mean to. With, I mean, I've seen a lot of incidents here through the years, but these are kind of uncharted waters with an incident like this. This early in the season, I mean, especially. I don't remember a 2-0 and coach getting fired Yeah. after he went 2-0, and we got 10 games to go, and he's out. And, I mean, he's literally out and long gone. 
I mean, nobody's seen him. Nobody's heard from him. There are Michigan State people who have tried to contact him, who are his peers who have not talked to him, who have not heard back, who he's not texted back to. At least that was that. <coughs> Excuse me. Woo. That got all sneezed up on that. At any rate, uh, who have tried to contact him, who have texted him and so forth, and there's nothing that's come back from all that. I don't think I remember sneezing three times in a row. That was that. impressive, actually. That was, um, well, that was, you I know. Mean, you look, that was like the Washington offense of sneezing I right know. there. It was, I, I hope I didn't get anything on you one way or the other. In <laughs> fact, I did get over a cold this week. Brock will tell you about that. But at this time of the year, I guess they're, that these things are going around a little bit. It's been somewhat of an unusual September, beginning with the fact that I can never remember four consecutive September home games, and especially with weather like this. And it's a team with a winning record, but has a different yeah. coach. It is. It has been a wild month. Um, it, it's funny because I, I, you mentioned that, and I, your sneeze brought this into my mind it too. Is. I cut. I cut my grass Friday afternoon before the Central game. And I didn't, I didn't get a chance to cut it again until yesterday. I went almost two and a half weeks without cutting my grass. It has been a little slower. Chris, let me update everybody here on some scores here. You can react however you want. They've only got nine minutes to go before halftime, and Rutgers and Michigan are 7-7. Army is leading a very good Syracuse team, 7-3 at Syracuse. Texas A&M leads Auburn 6-0. Uh, Oklahoma has scored now and now leads at Cincinnati 7-3. Fox's pregame show was at Cincinnati today. Every time I see Urban Meyer on that Fox pregame show, I think he's got a great deal. Then I see him on the Big Ten pregame show. He's obviously taped on that. And I think, why would anybody think that Urban Meyer, coming off the issues he had in the NFL with the Jacksonville Jaguars, with the deal he obviously has, it's a good deal, why does he want to get back into coaching anywhere, let alone here? And I only bring it up because in the world of social media, I read his name. Yeah, and, uh, you know, people want to have a winner. I, I, I want to be associated with a winner. I get that. But sometimes you have to look at the broad picture. And the bigger picture in this instance is that you can't probably bring someone in with that type of issues into this program right now with the situation that's happening now and has been going on. And I, I, Listen, you could say football matters. we got to worry about winning, and that's the important thing, but you can't. I, if you're looking at the university as a whole, you can't. And it, yep. it, 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 in theory, it might be great if you're running an NFL team to try that if this was the NFL, but this is something completely different. And I, I, you know. And then I raced home last night because, you know, we have family ties with Purdue, so she and I are, you know, we're all dinnered up and everything else to see Purdue. And I'll tell you, when, when uh, our middle one was in the athletic department there for six years, let's just say the crowds for the home games aren't what they are now. <laughs> I mean, and they've poured a fortune into that stadium. So they're in prime time on a Friday night last night with Wisconsin. So every time I see Urban Meyer on the screen, I think about this. And then when I see Luke Fickle on the screen, as he was last night yeah. with Wisconsin, and the first thing I thought watching the Wisconsin-Purdue game, uh, I think Michigan State's fortunate it doesn't have Wisconsin. Wisconsin on the schedule. Yeah, 38-17 Wisconsin. You know, here's another thing. Night. Wisconsin lost to Washington State. When I watched Wisconsin play last night, I thought, man, these guys look pretty. They're massive. Yeah. And they've got a veteran quarterback. It's amazing how the world has changed when you can get a like Notre Dame's got a veteran quarterback transfer. Everybody's got somewhere, somehow, a transfer quarterback who's helping them. And certainly Wisconsin does. And they dominated that game last night. So I guess from the start of the year, when everybody said, who in the world's going to win the Big Ten West? I guess I've got it narrowed down to Iowa and Wisconsin. I have to keep Iowa in there because Iowa's undefeated, although Iowa's at Penn State tonight. So, you know, now we got a showdown game for both of those teams. Yeah, just with just the one game going on right now in the Big Ten, 7-7 Michigan and Rutgers down in Ann Arbor, about seven minutes or so before halftime. Other games coming up this afternoon. Nebraska hosts Louisiana Tech at 3.30. Illinois hosts Florida Atlantic at 3.30. Those are the last of uh, the non-conference games for those programs. Same with Indiana uh, hosting Akron at 7.30. Then the other Big Ten games today, obviously, you've got Michigan State hosting Maryland, 3.30 kickoff here, and it'll be on NBC or WILX. Yeah, it's a big day um, for us. We've got that. We have Maryland, Michigan State. Then we got Ohio State, yep. Notre Dame. Yep, and then that's the big one. That's the big game at the end. Uh, but you got Minnesota Northwestern at 7.30. Uh, another Big Ten game, of Battle for the West. Yep. And Iowa-Penn State in Happy Valley at 7.30. A CBS game there. And, as you mentioned, on NBC tonight, 
Ohio State at Notre Dame. Uh, it's going to be a interesting game down there, a wild time as well. Nathan, turn up our uh, guest microphone. Uh, I know who Zeke the Wonder Dog is, but Zeke's handler is with. Excuse me, could you identify yourself as the proprietor of Zeke the Wonder Dog here? <laughs> I would be honored to indicate I'm the proprietor of Zeke the Wonder Dog. It, it, and so Zeke is a he, and what year, this is the 13th Zeke, is that what you were telling me last week? How many Zeke's have we had? It's Zeke 4. Zeke, Zeke 4. 4, okay. Exactly. And how old is Zeke 4? Zeke 4 is 7. Wow. And what are Zeke 4's duties in pregame every home game? He meets up with the band to do the parade into the stadium, so that's one of the things he does every game and we try to hit as many tailgates as we possibly can and i don't know if you remember the zeke before this we could always get him to bark on the radio oh wow! and we'd stop by and he would bark um this zeke his name's buckshot doesn't <laughs> bark on the radio so A little shy but he's here to cheer on the famous Spartans. And how does he not get spooked when he is on the field during a TV timeout catching a frisbee? I would think just in that environment with that crowd which no one is familiar with like that, how does he get familiar with that? I will tell you it's that focus on that orange disc. His favorite color of disc is a frisbee, orange frisbee you pull that out of the bag, and he is glued to that. And do you have free reign on how many times on a TV timeout he can appear on the field, or is it a specific number? We, um, we really work closely with marketing athletics to script out when he's on the field so that it works in collaboration with other promotions, with other um, awards, um, the cheerleaders, the dance team. So it's very closely orchestrated. And has his breed been the same for all four Zeeks? It has. It's a yellow lab. One, our very first Zeke we had back in 2006, 5, 6, was a black lab. Um, but other than that, they're all yellow labs. What does Zeke do all week when he's not at a football game? Oh, that's a great question. (laughs) Monday night football. This past Monday night, he did the Steelers game. Oh. He did halftime at the Steelers. Thank you for the win. That's right. As a Steelers fan, I appreciate that, Zeke. And October 15th, he's going to be at the Jets, performing halftime at the Jets. Well, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, right? So what, these teams hear about him and then you get invited to go? And yeah. They, and they pick That's up awesome. the expenses for all that and so on and so forth? And Absolutely. how do you transfer him to those stadiums? He gets transported via his van so on he, the road. So it is a van. Has it he ever is. been at a Lions game? No, he has not. He has not been to make Lions. that happen. So, uh... uh I mean, does he have to rehearse much of this one way or the other? I mean, it's amazing, and he hardly ever misses that disc, does he? No, he doesn't. He's had a lot of years of experience. He was only about one and a half when we brought him out here at Spartan Stadium. Um, So he's had a lot of practice, but he does practice during the week as well. Where does the name Zeke come from? So the original Zeke started performing in the late 70s early 80s and it's short for ezekiel gary eisenberg who will be on the field with him today with us um owned the original zeke and so zeke is short for ezekiel and how many pictures will he take in pregame here with pete i mean i mean if you're i mean i don't i've counted i don't know how many pictures he's taken so far now but I would Probably. think he would get tired from the time he gets here. to. The, and by the way, what time does he arrive here for a 3.30 game? We usually get here about three to four hours in advance. And so from here, will you just parade all through all the tailgates on campus and exactly. that? Exactly. Exactly. So a- encourage all the Spartan fans and tailgaters to see have Zeke's sightings and are there any other football school team whatever that has a I don't know if I should call him a mascot but a performer like Zeke the Wonder Dog elsewhere in America or is he unique into himself he's unique because 
he's a working mascot. He catches frisbees. You've got Tennessee's dog. You've got George's dog. You've had Washington had the Huskies, um, but none of them actually perform. And where is he during the game when he's not on the field on a timeout? And how do you keep him, how should I, I don't want to say sedated, but how do you keep him in place till we need you to go perform? We're usually standing on the sidelines. All right. right. Very good. So he and doesn't need a ticket to get in, huh? No, he doesn't. <laughs> and one of the um, very famous traditions is after halftime, the, uh, there's always a band member or a band director that always gives Zeke an apple. So he always looks forward to eating his apple on the sidelines. So he does get an apple back. He gets an apple. Oh, that's good. Zeke, thanks for coming by. You're welcome anytime. Look at that. They're not here to see us. Yeah. And they're exactly not here right. to listen to anything we have to say. <laughs> they don't care about anything we have to say. They just want, and cameras are ready to take more pictures with Zeke. They Very are good. ready for him. Thanks for stopping it's by. It's all part of those 100 to 200 pictures he gets on game day. Does he do anything on the winter or spring sports at all? Oh, yeah. We put his little Nikes, little black boots on his feet. He does a lot of basketball games. Nice. We're here for um, a number of the men's and women's basketball so games. So he actually gets more cheers in the Breslin Center than Izzo does, right? I mean, he would have to. I wouldn't say that. I would. I've never heard Zeke booed yet. So, And by the way, where is the Frisbee right now? It's, it's hidden away. Secret okay. location. All That's right. right. <laughs> All right. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, right. you guys. Thanks a lot a of lot. fun. I don't think we've had Zeke stop by before and say hi to us and all that, so that works good. That's why we call it the tailgate show because I can't believe the people that come over here. They're, yeah, they're not over here to see us. Yeah, and maybe yeah. Becky, but they're not over here to see us one way or the other. But Zeke's over here at the Meyer Fan Fest if you're interested one way or the other. Um, yeah. So he's a what she say? He's a golden uh, golden lad. Is that what she said? Yeah, golden yes. lad. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we up against it here, Nathan. All right. Well, we got one hour down here, and we got another hour to go here. The White, L- White Law PLLC Tailgate Show is brought to you by Hudson, Inc., Kia of Lansing, Kia of Jackson, Price Right RV, MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine, Doubting Industries, Gravity Smokehouse, Shoe Pan and Sons Recycling Industrial Services, and our feature restaurant sponsor this week, Pizza House in East Lansing, Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press, Tim Stout from WILX and the game, 7.30 a.m. You're listening to the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show, broadcasting live from Munfield. Coming back after this. Want to be heard? Open the Lansing Sports Network app and voice your sports opinions now. More from the White Law PLLC Telgate Show next. Lansing's Big Talker, 1240 WJIM Lansing and Classic Rock 94.9 WMMQ East Lansing. Town Square Media Stations. Texting and rolls you into date from the 1240 WJIM Traffic Center. Next. It's the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on the Lansing Sports Network. The Big Talker, 1240 WJIM and Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ. A tradition in Lansing for over 20 years. With your hosts, the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, and offensive-minded host, Beanie Howell. Powered by White Law PLLC, Hudson Incorporated, Kia of Lansing, and Kia of Jackson. Price Right RV, MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine. This is the White Law PLLC tailgate show it's another game day travel update from the 1240 wjim traffic center here's brock palmbush uh, no backups or accidents to report at this time traffic moving along and around at normal speeds however you're coming in from the east side westbound grand river uh, actually grand river both directions between spartan avenue and hagedorn road uh, that's uh, got a single lane closure due to maintenance that's until the end of the month As far as weather goes, man, it's just perfect today. 70 degrees, mostly sunny skies. It's going to get up to 73 today. Just a perfect day for football, and it'll gradually cool off as it gets later in the game. It'll get down into the upper 50s when it gets dark tonight. Game day traffic and weather are brought to you by Kia of Lansing and Kia of Jackson, home of the $3,000 minimum trade.
This is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on the Lansing Sports Network, the Big Talker 1240 WJIM, and Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ, a tradition in Lansing for over 20 years, with your hosts, the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, and offensive-minded host, Beanie Howell, powered by White Law PLLC, MSU Healthcare, Shupan and Sons, Gravity Smokehouse, Doubting Industries, and Chandler's Top Shelf. Now, from Van Fest at the stadium in the Price Right RV Studios. This is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show. Back here live at Fan Fest on Munfield, just southwest of Spartan Stadium. It's the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on 1240 WJAM Lansing's Big Talker, Classic Rock 949 MMQ, and the Lansing Sports Network at LansingSportsNetwork.com. The White Law PLLC Tailgate Show is presented by White Law PLLC. Jamie White is a proud Spartan, and he's built a full-service, nationally recognized law firm with a team of experienced trial attorneys. White Law PLLC track record speaks for itself with more than $1.4 billion in results. White Law PLLC fighting for their clients is their highest priority. Check them out at whitelawpllc.com. The White Law PLLC Tailgate Show is broadcasting live from... The Price Right RV Modal Studio here on Munfield. Price Right RV on own your vacation in, with 2022 and 2023 model year and clearance, which is going on right now at Price Right RV.com. Go green, go white, go Price Right. Who's the, your, oh, you're not done. Oh, no, I, I, I got copious notes here from, from Brandon Howell. Boy, I guess you do. Yeah, this, is, this hour of the White Law PLLC tailgate show is brought to you by Brunette Home Improvement. An unparalleled commitment to excellent and quality best defines the work Brunette Home Improvement does. For more than 38 years, they've been regarded as one of the leading roofing and remodeling businesses in Lansing, Grand Ledge, DeWitt, and the rest of Michigan. As a, as a locally owned and operated business, Brunette Home Improvement takes pride in providing a high quality workmanship and superior customer service at Brunette Home Improvement. They don't just strive to meet your home renovation expectation, they challenge themselves to exceed it. Brunette Home Improvement, roofing, siding, windows, and more. Give them a call at 517-327-1005 or visit them online at brunettehomeimprovement.com. And our restaurant sponsor this week in the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show is Pizza House in East Lansing. Pizza House is a preferred MSU tailgate vendor, and they can deliver food across campus through tailgates and in the dorms if you really want it. Known for their famous Chicago-style pizza. They have 24 beers on tap, including 18 local Michigan brews. You can find them online at pizzahouse.com or visit them over at Hanna Plaza on Hagedorn Road. Who's the best football team in America? Because the ones Rutgers, that are, right? Michigan's tied, going to halftime, 7-7. They're ranked number two. Florida State's fourth. They're behind Clemson, 10-7. Then you got uh, Oklahoma struggling with Cincinnati. They're up 10 to 3 in that game, but I wonder who's the best team in America and I don't know if it's Georgia. I mean, I, we're going to be mean, a Georgia struggle the, last week, didn't I mean, they? We're going to be a third of the way through the schedule. Uh, I mean, Michigan's got the ball at Rutgers 12th, so they may score before the half, but it, but you know, it's 7 to 7. And I mean, maybe Rutgers yeah. is better than you thought, huh? Maybe Rutgers was better than everybody thought. They they're kind of flying under the radar a little bit. Right. It's Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press filling in for Beanie Hall of offensive minded on the game 7:30 a.m. We got more guests. Edward here Emmerich is here. Anvil Crawler just got done playing, or I, I, or is it an intermission for Anvil Crawler right now? Are you guys done, or is yeah, this yeah, intermission? Yeah, we're done. That's it for today. How old is the band right now, and how did you get booked for the Meyer Fan Fest? Uh, we've been around for uh, about six, six, seven years. Uh, we uh, have some friends in the uh, athletic department that uh, helped us get this uh, spot tonight. Um, and uh, you know, I was a little, a little unsure about it. You know, it's not, we're used, used to playing smaller clubs and uh, sometimes basements. Uh, so this is a little, little, little bit of a step up. Uh, but I met with the crew last week. I was very impressed with everything they did, had going on. Did you go to Michigan State? No, 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 no. Because uh, I see the state hat uh, looks good uh, on Yeah, I'm just know. a homer. Uh, grew up in Lansing. <laughs> I just love the sport. So, no, well, I uh, mean, he, maybe he, you... Uh, he indoctrined me. So. This, I mean, is, this <laughs> is a great local music scene. Where people don't realize it anymore, it seems like, because of the amount of clubs that have been around have shrunk over the years but it oh, seems yeah. like it's starting to blow up again a little bit more yeah lansing's got uh, good things going on um so since covid we lost a couple of the big main venues around here and uh that um gap is about to be filled with a gray wall hall uh downtown 
I'm very eager to see um, them open up and start getting some serious touring packages through Lansing. But yeah, Lansing has a very robust local music scene. Um, you know, it kind of it's kind of up and down. It's been tough with just like one real main venue and then like you know like the DIY spaces. But uh, I think everything that I'm seeing with like the developments downtown, you got Graywall Hall, you got the uh, the Ovation. Uh, it's a really exciting future for the yeah, future. Yeah, I, I was here during probably what. I think a lot of people locally would say it was the pinnacle of the music scene here back in the mid 90s when you had bands like the Verve Pipe breaking out nationally, you had the boy, you had 19 Wheels, you had the DTs, you had Fat Amy, you had all of those big bands that kind of came in the last, which is still around locally and doing oh, some yeah. things. I mean, there's, it, it, but there was a space, there were spaces in East Lansing that were playing live music every night of the week how and it seems like know, that's dried up how do you know all that? i bet you didn't realize that i used to be a music writer in college <laughs> i mean how, how do, do you know, know? <laughs> like what i'm curious is i'm like, a diverse individual have you ever thought of adding even one of your parents into the group just for a there little you go. texture something like that <laughs> what was that well have you ever had a thought of adding either one of your parents to the group just to add a little no, texture to the band, no right? they're I, I just let them come to my shows like a couple years ago uh, they, they, they were, uh, you know, regular attendees for a while, and then I was like, all right, guys, give me some space. <laughs> so will, will you play any place else at Michigan State anytime soon at all? We don't have anything else on the calendar, um, at least not, not, not Anvil Crawler. We're going to take some time off until uh, next spring. And um, where does the name come from? The, the name is, um, it's, a, it's a type of lightning that goes across the sky. It's called the Anvil Crawler. Uh, we were driving down to a show in Detroit, playing in another band uh, with my drummer, Nick. He went to Michigan State, um, and we played in another band called Dead Hour Noise. We had just started this group. We started writing songs. We didn't have a name for it yet. We weren't really sure what it was going to be, but um, we drove through a lightning storm, and he started like pulling up, like, hey, put stuff on Google, and I was like, oh, that sounds cool. That's great that. name. <laughs> so for that performance today, does Michigan State just provide the stage and you provide everything else, or do they give yeah. you some kind of equipment for that? Yeah, um, so Michigan State uh, got us in touch with the production company, uh, I think PME is what they're called. Um, they provide the stage and all the equipment. You know, we, we brought our instruments and our amplifiers and our drum kit and all that. Everybody um, was going nuts over here. <laughs> Although i got to tell you, Edward, when Zeke the Wonder Dog came over here, here, we drew a crowd. Not for <laughs> us. It wasn't us. I thought it was to come see us, but you know what? Uh, the the, the crowd were, disappeared with Zeke. But uh, when Zeke left, they left. Yeah, that's Zeke all. has an entourage. Zeke has an entourage for sure. Well, good luck with the band. What year? How long have you been together now? Um, the band is. This band has been together for about five or six years. Um, I've been playing with. Uh, our drummer Nick since we were in high school, so almost like you know, 15, 16 years. I think. Good for you. Yeah, it was great, man. Yeah. I tell you, it, it, it was rocking around here. The no, love you. Okay. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me on and shouting us out throughout yeah. the week. Uh, we all had right. some people text me say, "Hey, I heard about you on Tim Stout." There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, you know what? Your mom is the star. You know, every right. time I see your mom, I always say, "Can I get a picture with your mom?" So it's a Christmas <laughs> card for me, something like that, yeah. one way or the other. Anyway, thanks, Edward. Keep up the good work and yeah. congratulations. Great job. We'll Thank see you. you. We Got so everybody much. around here today. Okay. One where that Anvil Crawler was great, man. They played here I inside mean, a minute left down in Ann Arbor it's before the, half. Fourteen seven, Michigan. Yeah, one way or the other. Hi, Andy. Before you go, tell me what the homecoming parade was like last night, Andy. Yeah, when, when did you're the real star here. Forget so, about us. You're the star. Like, what were your duties last night? Uh, you just you, I just announced the just parade said, entrance, and there was 115 of them. We had some drop, drop off, some ads in the last moments of the. But what a beautiful night for a parade! And how gorgeous. much preparation did you have to put into that to announce it in advance? Was not, that a big not deal? Not a whole lot. They do a really nice job um, organizing it, so they give you a binder and it's one page. And Russ White and I just took turns reading as the entrance came down. And Cat Cooper from MSU is our spotter, so she let us know. If somebody was out of order, so we weren't <laughs> announcing the. Does the point. MSU band anchor that? Where are, where are they in the of the 115? Where do they come in? They were in probably the first ten. Oh, they entries. were early. Yeah, they were early, and then you had the basketball teams, the women's and men's, and wrestling, and gosh, pom pom. Yeah, it was really a nice evening. I was honored to be able to take part. She in wasn't it. here at the game last week. She went to the Duran Duran concert. Oh, I did. It was really That's good. That's awesome. Too. 
I mean, preposterous to give up a game for I that. Would, Although, I'd for the way the that. game turned out, maybe it was a good deal yeah, for There's a few concerts that I've been considering giving yeah. up some games for this well, fall, I started but I out can't. in radio as a DJ in the 80s, so Duran Duran brought back some Yeah, yeah that, was, that was one of my first favorite bands growing up. And was it? Yeah. that's. Uh, I'm a big music guy, if you didn't figure that out yet, Tim. Yeah. That's where, uh, I, if I wasn't doing this and covering football and basketball and all the other things, that's probably what I'd be doing. Is really? Doing some something with music. Yeah. That's, yeah. But, but you're really good at what you do. Well, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. And I, I'm, I got my binder of stuff from Beanie to figure out how to handle this guy right here. I it's mean, a big job. It, it really is. You're, doing, you're you know, doing great. I thought they were all over here to get pictures <laughs> with us. No, they wanted the dog. <laughs> I mean, uh, the dog's a big hit. The dog takes a lot of pictures, I'll tell you. It takes a lot of pictures. All right, Annie, All thanks. Right. I appreciate Good to talk it. to you guys. Good to have fun you. today. Take care of you-know-who right. over there, whatever. I mean, we tried to do the best we could with him. But your dad was around. Her dad was, you know. Of course, he's popular wherever he goes. So she was gone. So I had her dad and I had Tom. But, there uh, we go. But, uh, you know, Chupin has a good time. At yeah. any rate, on we go. About the Meyer Fan Fest today, there are a lot yeah. of people here today at the Meyer Fan Fest. Yeah, it's starting to pick up a little bit more. Because we're nowhere near the start of the game one way or the other so you know so so that's a big deal all the way around yeah 14 to 7 down in ann arbor just about at halftime uh boy that it doesn't sound like it's a easy cakewalk with jim harbaugh back on the sideline i mean i don't know what the discussion will be at halftime for Does, either team if, if michigan loses this game do you start to fire harbaugh to the train I, I, look, I, I just can't. I, I don't know how close. You know, they were a 24-point favorite to sing, too, because everybody said, is Rutgers any good? Is Rutgers any Is Michigan State goes to Rutgers here in a yep, few weeks? a couple weeks. You know, and if you remember, they opened against Northwestern in the first game, and while it wasn't great, they still won that thing by 17 points. I mean, they're, you know, they're undefeated for crying yeah, out North, loud. Northwestern's a program in turmoil right now, too. Yeah, it isn't it, just Michigan it's State. It's not easy to deal with the coaching changes. But to your point, year. Michigan State's fans have a great time when the weather's good here. You know, you know, you've been here when the weather's lousy and if the season's kind of gone yeah. down. You know, we've done these tailgate shows in another location and it was the police and us and that was about <laughs> what it was for the whole show. It's just yeah. the police going by. This is so much nicer out here. It is. And I don't usually get over this way because usually when I get to the stadium, I'm right upstairs. So this is... It's a nice event. I mean, it's making good use of the field here, All right. for sure. Nathan, when do we take our next break? You tell us one way or the other. Do we want to take one Got right it now? now? All right. Does we're Brock gonna... know we're going to take a break right now as we I roll think on he does. I, I, Brock's a consummate professional. Did they he give does. you anything else to read here? That yes, goes they did. The of break? course. All right. Of course. I got a lot of and things. And then I won't interrupt you. You got the White, L, White Law PLLC tailgate show brought to you by Chandler's Top Shelf, A to Z Gutters, Alumni Hall, B&M Trailer Sales. Meet on the West Side, Jersey Mike Subs in Okemos, Pizza House, Gazelle Wealth Management, and our featured restaurant sponsor this week, Pizza House in East Lansing. Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press, Tim Stout from WILX in the game, 7.30 a.m. You're listening to the White Law PLLC tailgate show, broadcasting live on 94.9 WMMQ and 12.40 WJIM. Want to be heard? Open the Lansing Sports Network app and voice your sports opinions now. More from the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show next. Back with more of the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on 1240 WJIM and 94.9 MMQ in less than 60 seconds. The Michigan State Spartan football team is back for another season on the Lansing Sports Network. The Big Talker 1240 WJIM and Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ. Never miss another touchdown or tackle again. Stream the game in the free Lansing Sports Network app. Powered by White Law PLLC, MSU Healthcare, Chupan and Sons, Gravity Smokehouse, Doubting Industries, and Chandler's Top Shelf. It's another game day travel update from the 1240 WJIM Traffic Center. Here's Brock Palmbush. No backups or accidents to report at this time. Traffic moving along at around normal speed. You can expect delays 490 coming in from the west side, 496 uh, going eastbound between Kreitz Road all the way up to the uh, all the way up to the Lansing Road exit, even up to the Grand Avenue exit due to the ongoing lane closure in that area. That'll be active until mid-November. Also, I'll look at the weather. It's absolutely beautiful. Mostly sunny skies, 70 degrees. It'll get up close to 75 degrees this afternoon, and it'll just gradually cool down as the game goes along. Game day traffic and weather brought to you by Kia of Lansing and Kia of Jackson, home of the $3,000 minimum trade. This 
is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on the Lansing Sports Network, the Big Talker 1240 WJIM, and Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ. With your hosts, the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, and offensive-minded host, Beanie Howell. Powered by White Law PLLC. Now from FanFest at the stadium in the Price Right RV Studios, this is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show. Welcome back. Welcome back to the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on 1240 WJIM, Lansing's Big Talker. Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ and the Lansing Sports Network, LansingSportsNetwork.com. Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press with Tim Stout broadcasting live from the Price Right RV Mobile Studio on Munn Field. This hour of White Law PLLC Tailgate Show is brought to you by Brunette Home Improvement. And, Tim, we've got the offensive keys that... Well, actually, before we get to the offensive keys a little bit later, we got the stats of the week. And I, I it's th- time for the stat of the game, powered by MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine. And I know that after last week's game, everyone's talking about the biggest stat, the worst defensive game in Michigan State football history, 713 total yards allowed. But to me, the stat of the game in that one was the 536 passing yards allowed which tied the second most in program history, something that's been an issue for this program for a couple years now, and something that with Maryland and and Talia Tagovailoa coming in, that Michigan State needs to be very cognizant about and work to improve because otherwise it could be another long day today. Well, you know, what I noticed, too, last week in that game, I thought, you know, Penix is injury prone to some degree. He got injured at Indiana. He was injured when he was here. He got injured at Washington. Nobody came close to him all Nobody. day long. Nobody came close to him. And the very first pass that he hit, remember State got the kick. They went three and out. So here comes Washington. See, And that first guy that he hit about 25 yards downfield was absolutely wide open. I thought, yeah. uh-oh, that doesn't look good just right out of the Because I think part of the, you know, the, the secondary gets blamed a great deal. Okay. Yeah, but they got a long time. They got to cover these guys well, because these quarterbacks are yeah. not getting rushed. Now I don't count Central Michigan and Richmond. Now, those, that, I mean, that was you knew how that was going to play out. For, I thought anyway. But man, if you it, they did not keep, play a quarterback that threw the ball in the first two weeks, no, and that did not help them. No, but I, I'll give you this as well. On, on top of the lack of pressure that they've shown, the linebackers in coverage last week were abysmal, and that's got to change. I mean, they got. Aaron Brule and Jacoby Winman and Cal Halliday all look got out of place, run away from in coverage. Uh, Winman I, I missed a, had a long pass down the field with him in coverage. Uh, you had a couple other spots where Halliday got stiff armed on Jeremy Bernard's touchdown run. Brule had some issues with right. Up. So just as much as the the secondary is an issue here, it's all three layers right. of that defense that are that are right. at fault. Here. Hang on, just a Becky. Can you, you see what he wants? If, if we can help him at all, I'm just not sure. Yeah, but, but hang on. Well, just that was because we got a lot of we got a lot yeah, of visitors. That, that was the stat of the game, on, and, and that's brought yeah. to you by MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine. MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine is the official healthcare provider of MSU student athletes and you. Individualized care to keep you on the starting line. MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine, committed to the athletes of Mid Michigan and beyond. Call MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine at 517-884-6100 or visit them online at healthcare.msu.edu. So will Tagovailoa today be the second best quarterback that Michigan State plays this year? Or does J.J. McCarthy play into that? Does the Ohio State quarterback play into that? Does the Penn State quarterback play? I mean, I guess, you know, the, the, a third of the season gets hit at the end of play this weekend. Yeah. And I think there are more questions about college football than there are answers, especially when you see the way some of these games yeah. are playing out today. I'll tell you this. Remember two years ago when Michigan State, went 11 and 2 but their defense gave out the most passing yards in the country the best quarterback every week that year was the one that faced michigan state's right. defense yeah i hear and you. that's that's the thing that you have to be concerned about and this is particularly acting coach harlan barnett working with the secondary and you bring back mark d'antonio who's got secondary pedigree um jim salgado working with the cornerbacks as a new hire they brought in from the nfl um, there were there were moments in that game against Washington where you saw them lock up, but not enough, and not nearly as, as consistent a manner as you need. Um, too many guys running free. So you picked Maryland to win I in the did. free press, right? I did. And, you know, I, I think a lot of that is predicated on that. And 
we got to see Michigan State's offense and nuts. You know what? Let's go right to the offensive keys. Brock? It's time for the offensive keys to today's game. Powered by White Law PLLC. We spend so much time all week talking about the defense that the offense kind of got a little bit of a pass, but they shouldn't. Michigan State hasn't scored on its first two drives in any game this season. And really the one that they got, their earliest first quarter touchdown was set up by a muff punt against Richmond. They were down 35 nothing at halftime last week. Cannot this week come out with a slow start. You need to see whether it be Noah Kim, do they make a change at quarterback? That's going to be interesting to see with what Caden Hauser did at the end of the game. But you still got to go with Noah Kim, I think, as the reigning Big Ten Player of the Week the previous week. And you can hear that they are they are really excited about the offensive keys, so much so that they're they're throwing sirens in on us. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, I, I, early early establishment is one of the big keys, and the other establishment is getting some drive time because those drives that they've had been three and out, minute thirty seconds, minute twenty. They need to sustain something up front with the offensive line. It really last week got bullied around. I mean, the place kicker really wasn't a factor last week, but what, he's tried two long field goals and made them both. So if this is a field goal game today, at least in the fourth quarter, does that portend something good for Michigan State? But like Chris said, although I don't think it feels quite as windy now as what it did a couple of, you know, it's died down a little bit. So, but, it dies, but now whether it's going to be that way by the time we get to 7 o'clock or 6.30 tonight, you know, remains to be seen. I never use the phrase must win very much, but I'm wondering if Michigan State loses this game today at game four with five out of eight on the road and one of the three at Ford Field against a highly ranked team, does the rest of the schedule October and November, you know, brace yourself if they lose today? You might brace yourself even if they win today, but at least if you win today, you're going on the road in prime time at Iowa next week with a little bit of feeling good about yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, Um, and and you get to go on the road with a win. I mean, you go in, and I had them going into this season two and three out of the Iowa game. And it's well, not an easy start. I no. mean, this, is, this schedule, everybody knew coming in was going to be one of the toughest in the conference and one of the toughest in the country, partly because everybody you play in the conference is good. You see what Rutgers has been doing down at Michigan. They're no gimme anymore. No, no, Maryland's not a gimme. The closest thing to a gimme on anybody's schedule right now is probably Indiana for this Michigan State team, at least in the East Division. And Indiana beat them here a yeah. year ago. No matter how they did it, they still beat them here a year ago. By To me, by week 11, all bets are off on every single team. Who knows what state could be like in week 11 going to Indiana. And to Indiana, that's senior day down there. Does that mean anything? You know, wins to Indiana are precious, absolutely precious. I would think Indiana would think this is a game we not only can win, we got to win. I, I don't think they have any locks one way or the other, including today moving forward one way or the other. They have no locks one way or the other. But maybe you could take solace in the fact that you say maybe Michigan isn't quite as good as everybody thought it was. You know, Michigan hadn't played anybody either. Michigan hasn't been on a road. Michigan's been in a little disarray because of Harbaugh's absence. But even back today, you know, they've they've made some mistakes in the first half in Ann Arbor, and now they go uh, at 14-7. to 7. I think Rutgers gets – am I right? No, yeah. Rutgers had the ball to start the game, so Michigan will get the yeah. ball. Well, here's your breaking news, Tim. If you're Michigan State – What's the one thing you can't afford right now? The injury report is out for today's game. Just came out. Out. Starting cornerback, Chuck Brantley. Out. Starting defensive end, Chris Bogle. Out. Linebacker, Jacoby Windman. Out. Running back, Jalen Berger. Out. Backup cornerback, Marquis Lowry. There is a lot of big names out this game, and that does not help a team that is trying to get its defense right. So you're saying here, I see on your tweet, you think the two that are the most notable, and did they surprise no, you No, Winman too, and Winman was one I missed initially But there, what about so. Brantley and Bogle? But, I mean, you can't, I mean, Brantley, starting cornerback, he got hit, uh, that big pass from Penix down the field uh, last week. He, he landed awkwardly and, and landed hard, whether it be the shoulder. He had shoulder issues two years ago. Um, but Winman is is a big one, big one, big loss right there. I would imagine you're going to see a lot more Jordan Hall at linebacker. Uh, what they do at cornerback, I mean, not just Charles Brantley, 
but also the backup cornerback, Marquis Lowry. You're going to have some young guys out on the edge trying to cover Maryland and Talia Tagovailoa trying to throw the ball deep. Now, this is a different practice in the Big Ten this year, right? That injury reports two have hours. to be revealed two hours before kick, and that's where we are. At least two hours, but coaches aren't going to go any earlier than that. Uh, my sense in listening to you, you think this is a bigger deal than just names on a page. Is that what I'm yeah. sensing from you? I mean, you're talking about some very key individuals, women especially from a leadership standpoint. Uh, out for Here's the, the Maryland out list. Uh, Neil Avery, Ramon Brown, those are a couple big ones for them. Andre Roy, Isaac Bunyan, Josh Jennings. They have no one questionable uh, on their their list that just came out uh, a few minutes ago here, and that's obviously going to be a big one. Some questionable ones. Uh, Another questionable one, Gino Vandemark, the offensive lineman. He got hurt last week, came back in, played through it, but they're also out. A couple other other questionable guys, Harold Joyner, Jarrett Jackson, and Caleb Coley, but the big ones. Chuck Brantley, cornerback, out. Jaron Mangum, running back, out. Run, linebacker, Jacoby Winman, out. Starting defensive end, Chris Bogle, out. Backups, Ma Niotte, the linebacker, out. Cornerback, Marquis Lowry, out. This is a big one. And obviously, Tiny Hopper is out for the season. He got hurt in the last drive last week. The tight end transfer from Boise State. So it's going to be what what could have been a long day it looks like it could, has a chance to be another long day right now so you think it's game. a stretch to say next man up <laughs> uh, there's a coach around the way that says there's a reason that the next man is the next man yeah, the next man is the next man and, and at some part at cornerback not only are you looking at the next man up you're looking at the next next man well, up. you know i mean i think this is an issue all over football especially in the nfl you know when you see these guys always predicting the nfl in the off season you know, I always say, well, no. What, what, I mean, like the Lions yeah. tomorrow. they got a lot of guys that are injured. I mean, you you can't guess that. Especially in football, you can't guess yeah. that. So when you say at the start of the season, well, I think Michigan will be here in Ohio State. And I claim that the, the reason that the, the, the heavy, the, the suspects are usually the same at the top and the bottom is because of depth. A lot of those teams have depth, okay? Yep. When Michigan State, they you know, they got some good players that are at the top. But let me ask you this. Off the Washington game last week, how many Michigan State players do you think could start for any one of those 22 positions of Washington? Ooh. Could, if Washington could have any Michigan State player and it provided he had to be a starter, would they take any I, Michigan State I'd say Nate State Carter. I, I think you'd look at Nate Carter. Um, I think Trey Mosley would be another guy that you would look at as a potential starter there, even though they're loaded at wide receiver. He's a guy that can catch balls. Um, not many. I don't not know many. about – I mean, I thought Washington's receivers made some tremendous catches in that game. I mean, I uh, – And decent coverage. I mean, they were playing up a little bit more last week. So we'll see if they have to do it this week. We're going to go to break now. The White Law PLLC tailgate show is brought to you by Hudson Inc., Kia of Lansing, Kia of Jackson, Price Right RV, MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine, Doubting Industries, Gravity Smokehouse, Shoe Pan and Sons Recycling Industrial Services, and our feature restaurant sponsor this week, Pizza House in East Lansing. One more segment coming back here. Chris Salar from the Detroit Free Press, Tim Stout from WILX in the game, 7.30 a.m. You're listening to the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show. Want to be heard? Open the Lansing Sports Network app and voice your sports opinions now. More from the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show. Next. Texting enrolls you in another travel update from the 1240 WJIM Traffic Center. Next. It's the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on the Lansing Sports Network, the Big Talker 1240 WJIM, and Classic Rock 949 MMQ. A tradition in Lansing for over 20 years. With your hosts, the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, and offensive minded host, Beanie Howell. Powered by White Law PLLC, Hudson Incorporated, Kia of Lansing, and Kia of Jackson, Price Right RV, MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine. This is the White Law PLLC tailgate show it's another game day travel update from the 1240 wjim traffic center here's brock palmbush uh traffic is slowing up 496 eastbound between kreitz road and lansing road due to the ongoing lane closure there also 69 westbound between m uh the, the uh, yeah m52 and uh, upton road that's because of the ongoing construction at near the peacock road exit weather-wise just perfect Fair skies, mostly sunny skies, 70 degrees. It's going to get up close to 75 by the time we get to kickoff and just gradually cool down uh, throughout the game. It might get down into the upper 50s once it gets dark out tonight. 
Game day traffic and weather brought to you by Kia of Lansing and Kia of Jackson, home of the $3,000 minimum trade. This is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on the Lansing Sports Network, the Big Talker 1240 WJIM, and Classic Rock 949 MMQ. With your hosts, the Dean of Sports, Tim Stout, and offensive minded host, Beanie Howell. Powered by White Law PLLC. Now from FanFest at the stadium in the Price Right RV Studios, this is the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show. Welcome back to the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on 1240 WJIM, Lansing's Big Talker, Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ, and the Lansing Sports Network. Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press broadcasting live from Price Right RV Mobile Studio here on Munn Field. And this hour of White Law PLLC Tailgate Show is brought to you by Brunette Home Improvement. Real quick segment here, a couple score updates. Only Big Ten game going on right now is into the third quarter. Michigan up 14 to 7. Number 2 Michigan against unranked Rutgers. 14 to 7 for the Wolverines early in the third quarter in that game. A uh, bunch of Big 10 action kicking off at 3:30 including num- Michigan State against undefeated Maryland. We've got a couple other scores. Clemson unranked Clemson at half up 17 to 14 on number 4 Florida State and former MSU Receiver Keon Coleman and the only other top ten game or top twenty-five game going on at the moment. Number sixteen Oklahoma ahead barely at Cincinnati, ten to three. Brock, we're going to head back to you. Uh, this this uh, for a quick break here. Uh, the White Law PLLC tailgate show is made possible thanks to White Law PLLC, Hudson Inc., Kia of Lansing, Kia of Jackson, Price Right RV, MSU Healthcare, Sports Medicine, Doubting Industries. Chupan and Sons Recycling Industrial Services, Gravity Smokehouse, Chandler's Top Shelf, A to Z Gutters, Alumni Hall, BNM Trailer Sales, Meat on the West Side, Pizza House, Gazelle Wealth Management, and our featured restaurant this week, Pizza House in East Lansing. Stay tuned. One more segment for Tim and I coming back here. You're listening to the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show. Want to be heard? Open the Lansing Sports Network app and voice your sports opinions now. More from the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show next. Back with more of the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show on 1240 WJIM and 94.9 MMQ in less than 60 seconds. The Michigan State Spartan football team is back for another season on the Lansing Sports Network. The Big Talker 1240 WJIM and Classic Rock 94.9 MMQ. Never miss another touchdown or tackle again. Stream the game in the free Lansing Sports Network app. Powered by White Law PLLC, MSU Healthcare, Chupan and Sons, Gravity Smokehouse, Doubting Industries, and Chandler's Top Shelf. But I thought, you know, the game last week, Washington would be close with Michigan State. Washington would win was a blowout. I, I, my, my issue with this picking State is not because I like State. I think State's very average. But I, I'm not, I, I got to see Maryland do this in a lot tougher stage. But I would tell Maryland, if you're ever going to beat Michigan State on the road, you better do it today. They're injured. They got, they're in disarray. The coaching thing is all messed up, the whole thing. If you're going to get them. And you're 3-0, and and you're on a roll with a game you can win to get to 2-0 and in the Big Ten because they already beat Northwestern. Today's the day you better do it. If they don't do it today, when are they going to do yeah. it, right? Maryland won last year in College Park. Mike Loxley has not won at Spartan Stadium no. in his, I think, five tries against Michigan State. But I, I, I just think with the injuries, when you've got two guys in the secondary at cornerback with Marquis Lowry, the backup, and Chuck Brantley, the starter, out, you've got... Starting linebacker Jacoby Winman out. You've got starting defensive end Chris Bogle out. Backup defensive tackle Dre Butler out. Uh, and those, those guys gave up 700 yards. Those guys gave up 700 yards. There's only so much next man up. I, I, I You know, it, it, it's tough to say it because this team could galvanize with it, but I, I think you got to look at it. This possibly being 
maybe like a 35 to 13 Maryland win at this point. So, it, and if that happens, then the Spartans are on a road for four weeks. They get a bye week, of course, on the first weekend in October. They go to Iowa next week. The tailgate show next week is from 4 to 6 p.m. We'll be in a studio yep. uh, because it's a 7.30 kick on NBC Channel 10 next uh, next Saturday night. And then, of course, at 3.30 this afternoon, yep. NBC's got that. Chris, thanks for yep. coming. Beanie Howell will be back next week in this chair. Uh, I'll be in Iowa City for that game. Uh, coverage for the F- Detroit Free Press. But I want to thank all of our sponsors for making the White Law PLLC tailgate show possible. White Law PLLC, Hudson Inc., Kia of Lansing, Kia of Jackson, Price Right RV, MSU Healthcare Sports Medicine, Doubting Industries, Shoe Pan and Son, Recycling Industrial Services, Gravity Smokehouse, Chandler's Top Shelf, A to Z Gutters, Alumni Hall, BNM Trailer Sales, Meat on the West Side, Pizza House, Gazelle Wealth Management, and our featured restaurant sponsor this week. Pizza House in East Lansing. The White Law PLLC tailgate show returns Saturday, September 30th, as the Spartans leave home for the first time this season. The destination is an unforgiving one. Kinnick Stadium, home of the Iowa Hawkeyes. It's a night game. We'll take it the air here on 1240 WJIM, Lansing's Big Talker and Classic Rock, 94.9 MMQ at 4 p.m., taking you up to the Spartan Media Network. Pre-game coverage at 6 p.m., kickoff at 7.30 next week, and we're getting ready for that now. Until then, for Tim Stout and all of us at the White Law PLLC Tailgate Show, I'm Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press. Detroit Free Press, thanks for listening. Big Talker, 1240 WJIM, Lansing, and Classic Rock 94.9 WMMQ, East Lansing, Town Square Media Stations.